Welcome back to AgriJS. Today's question is LeetCode 207, course schedule. So there are a total number of courses you have to take labeled from zero to none courses minus one. You're given an array of prerequisites where prerequisites I, A, B indicates that you must take course B before course A. So if we have zeros and ones, we need to take one before we can take zero. Return true if you can finish all the courses, otherwise return false. So in this first example, we have number of courses equal to two. And in order to take course one, we need to take course zero first. Is that possible? Yes, it is. There aren't any cycles here. However, in example two, we have two courses. And in order to take course one, we first need to take course zero. And in order to take course zero, we first need to take course one. So there's a cycle here, right? So this is going to return false. So how can we implement this? Let's take this example, right? We have zero point into one, zero point into two, and one point into two. Okay, there are no cycles here. Whereas with example two, where we had one, zero, zero, one, if we have a look at this, one points to zero and zero points to one. So in order to complete one, we go to zero. In order to complete zero, we go to one and we repeat the process. So it's going to enter an infinite loop. So we have a cycle here. So we can return false from this. But how would we go about checking to see whether there are cycles in this? Well, we're gonna use DFS to solve this problem. And with graph problems, we're going to create an adjacency list. And this will look something like this. So we have the current course we need to take, right? And this is going to map to the courses that need to be taken before this one. One is going to point to two, because in order to take one, we need to take two and two doesn't have any outgoing edges, so two can be an empty array. We're also going to need a visited set, and this is just going to store the nodes that we've visited within this graph. So let's start, we're gonna loop through the keys within the adjacency list. So if we start at zero, we can check whether it's in visited set. If it is within visited set, then we have a cycle, right? So if it's not, we just add it into the visited set, and then we recurse, right? So we go to its neighbors. So let's say we go to one first. We're at one, we check visited set. It's not in there, so we add one. And then we go to one's neighbor, so two, right? We look at two, two is not within visited, so we add it. And we can see that two doesn't have any outgoing edges. So this immediately, because there are no outgoing edges, can return back up the call stack true. But before we return true, we first need to remove two from the visited set. And the reason for this is if we go back to zero and we check for two's neighbors, if we left it within the visited set, this would return a cycle, right? But here, as you can see, there aren't any cycles because these outgoing edges are directed, right? So we return true from this. At one, we can see that we've checked all of one's neighbors or the courses that it needs to complete before being completed. So we can remove this because we've now seen it. And we can also update one in our adjacency list. So we can remove the course it requires to complete, right? Because we know it can carry this out. It can be completed. Once we've done that, we can return true from here. Now, zero has to go to two because two needs to be completed in order for zero to be completed. So we visit two. We look in the visited set here. As you can see, we've deleted it from the previous time we visited two because as you can see, these are outgoing edges, right? So there is no cycle here. So we can add this into the visited set. Then we go to two. We look in the adjacency list. This is an empty array. So we know this can be completed, right? There are no outgoing edges. There's no chance of there being a cycle. So we can remove this from the visited since we've seen it and we can return true. Finally, all neighbors of zero have been visited. So we can empty this out and we can finally return true. So firstly, we'll create the adjacency list, right? So it's going to be an object. Then we're going to need a visited set. So we can create that here. Now we need to populate the adjacency list. So we're only going to be mapping B to A in this case, right? Because for course A to be complete, it's dependent on course B being completed first, right? So we're only going to map B to A. So if we loop through A and B of prerequisites, if we don't have a value already in the adjacency list at A, then we can create that and we'll create it being an array containing B. Otherwise, we're just going to push in at position A within the adjacency list. So we're going to need a DFS function, right? We'll pass in current. And in order for this to work, we need to loop through the keys of the adjacency list and run DFS for those keys. So let key in adjacency list. So if DFS at key returns false, then we are going to return false, right? 
otherwise we're going to return true. And what this DFS function is doing is it's checking for cycles. So firstly, we need to check visited, whether it has current. If it does, then we have a cycle. So we return false. We also need to check whether the value in the adjacency list is just an empty array. If it is, great, this course can be completed. So we return true. So if adjacency list at current is equal to an empty array, we can return true. Then we can add to visited the value of current and we can check the neighbors. So if there is a neighbor to check, then we can loop through the neighbor and carry out the DFS on this. So if DFS neighbor doesn't return true, then we're going to return false. And once current has been visited, we need to delete the current from visited set. And seeing as we visited all neighbors within the adjacency list at current, we can set it to an empty array. Finally, if we reach this point, we can return true. Let's give that a run. Submit it. And there you go. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one.